Today we're gonna make an up-tempo bouncy kick from completely scratch with only FL Studio stock plugins. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna shape the kick with Citrus, which is a stock plugin of course. And then after that on the FX, we're gonna use Paramatic EQ, Wave Shaper, a soft clipper and some reverb. And that's it. I'm gonna show you the whole process. Um, most importantly, why I twitch certain knobs and why I do certain things. So that being said, let's just go straight into it and we'll start with the basics. Let's go. All right, let's start with the first step and that is to open up Citrus. Citrus, it kind of looks complicated. We're not gonna talk too much about Citrus today. Um, just follow my steps. It is basically a serum, <laughs> a light serum, a very uh, not user-friendly serum. And um, all you need is an oscillator, a sinus wave for a bouncy up tempo kick. So that's what we're gonna do. And uh, we're gonna use one oscillator, um, just reset these settings um, because they're confusing. If you don't know the program, it might be confusing. We only need one oscillator, so that is oscillator one in this case it's called um operator oscillator operator one so we're going to turn that on by default it's off turn it on here sick and is this the default preset i doubt so this is the default preset all right open up the default preset boom now we have this over here uh let's select a key i like f f sharp Ooh, bassy very bassy nice nice all right, let's select a key. Um, I like F, so let's go F. I put it down a few octaves for the bass. That's one octave too high. Control arrow down. Right, F1, that's a lot of sub. I can hear it loud and clear. Okay, so now we have to shape it. Mm, we wanna add a little bit of punch to it. And we also would like the, if we draw it out, it has to go um, full volume, duck, full volume open up okay so the way we do that is we go to volume and then we draw it out if you change it over here over here you see the dk sustain and click on tempo then it activates and then you can clearly hear the fade okay okay so what you want to do is you want to put this all the way to the left because the dk and sustain is going to tell you how long the sound is in citrus so how I would draw it out is something, right click, something like, um, and it might sound really familiar, okay. Okay. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah, clip that if you want. Anyway, that's it. If you, um, if you don't have a subwoofer, it sounds like this now. That's already a little bit that bouncy effect. Okay, put it on uh, 200 BPM, 210, whatever, 200. Okay, so now you have a wall of bass with that movement. Okay, now let's go to, you can use a sinus, but I had more results with changing the waveform a little bit to a little bit more straight line, something like this. Okay, that sounds good. Now, the magic happens in the FX because this is nowhere near a complete kick. So we're going to the FX. We're putting it on a new FX. Control L. Boom. Nice. Okay. Let's go to the first step. The first step is I want to add a little bit of stereo field in the sound. So a trick that you can use is put a reverb 2 on it uh, as a first one. I'm just going to name everything. It's going to be stereo. Okay. So what we'll do is let's click this away. DK off, bass off, wet off. And then with the ER, the early reflection, you can determine how much stereo field you're, you're going to have. sounds better when you add the distortion after this so we'll do that but for now let's just leave it here okay now here comes the magic part right let's make a quick um kick roll
Okay, one thing I have to change over here though is the uh, the polyphony on one because of what FL Studio does when you put it on one, it detects the tempo better and the total length of the sound. It doesn't it doesn't overlap each other when you play it. Okay, so there's that. Uh, a little switching back and forth, but you know me. Um, so we have the stereo field, and now the most important part. That is the EQ boost, and then after that, the distortion EQ boost. We're going to use the Paramatic EQ. Where are you? It's right here. Okay. Now, this one is going to be, or this one, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Let's just use this one. It's a little bit more in the middle. Um, this one is going to determine the, the balance effect. So it's going to do this, 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 whoop, 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 whoop. Okay, so we're going to have to automate that. And the way you do that, it's really weird that you can do it here. Um, right click here, create automation clip. It's this parameter. Okay, let's automate it. Right click, create automation clip. Right, so this is going to determine the movement of the kick. All right, so we have this. And let's take a look at it, what it does. Let's put a wave shaper after it. So it will emphasize the effect. Crank it all the way open. Beautiful. Um, let me turn down the audio a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to create that movement and see what happens. Let's make this detached so we can always see what's happening. Okay, so this is a kick. This is one kick. So you should be working like this. Okay, so the way that you do that is you start by opening it up and then halfway the kick, something like this. And then something like this. This is the pattern that you want to do. Looks like this. Okay. Still doesn't sound like an up-tempo bouncy kick. Well, we'll get there. Maybe this is not the right spot. We're going to find out. Later. Somewhere should be the right spot for the uh, for that bouncy effect. Okay. So now we're going to determine the peak, which is going to be the punch too. So the punch sound is the peak. And um, let's experiment. Let's add a few peaks here. Not bad. Maybe another one. Nice. Starting to look like something. Okay, now let's find the sweet spot for that bass. And it works better if you have... A subwoofer. All right. That's more definitely more low end here. I would say fifty four hertz. And you can adjust this according to taste. And then play around with the piece. Not bad. I like it. All right. So that sounds really good so far. So stereo field, EQ boost before the distortion, wave shaper. Now I want to add some corrections to it. So let's open up a paramedic EQ. And I think I'm going to boost a little bit in the sub. And I'm going to cut down a little bit on the 300 hertz. <laughs> What this does, it, it basically gives a little bit more room for the uh, for the sub and the punch to be separated. Don't mention the uh, don't look at the the, me the meters for now. We're just gonna blast it all the way. We'll put some clippers uh, in a bit. This sounds really good. Now, speaking of clippers, I think it's now time to uh, to do a soft clipper. Yeah, to tone it down a little bit. Okay, everything is uh, in proportion. Zero dB. Okay, now I can use span. I set stock plugins, so we're going to use Paramatic EQ too to see if we need any corrections. The kick itself looks pretty cool. I'm maybe a little bit of high end. Yeah, this is pretty good.
Um, we can also boost uh, the, the bass a little bit more. The more you boost it, though, the less dynamic it will happen. If I push it louder, the soft clipper is like, eh, eh, that's too many signals. I'm just going to hold it, hold it back. So that's basically it. That is basically your up-tempo bouncy kick. Um, again, you can change the pitch, uh, the punch, I mean. And you can change it here too. But I like this, maybe a little bit more. If you want it lower, you have to move all your peaks to lower. But I like this one for now. That's pretty cool. So that's your balance up tempo kick. Now, let's add some FX to the kicks. So I made a uh, TikTok about it and I got a lot of questions. How do you make a kick like that? Well, here we go. Here's the tutorial. Okay, so let's follow the kick pattern. It's kind of hard to see. Can I change the color a little bit? Can I see it better? No, definitely not. How about I make it a little bit shorter for now? Yeah, okay. So it's twice here. So you have to match the kick roll. Okay, so like that. And instead of these four ones, I'm going to make that weird effect. You can clip that if you want. I don't care. <laughs> All right. So what we'll do here is um, make it straight and then boom, boom. Let's see. Copy paste this. Maybe it's not the right peak for now. How about this? And just remove this one. Yeah, you can mess around with that like that, something like this, maybe. Um, do it fast. Maybe pitch it up, I don't know. Not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad. Okay. How about this? I think it's pretty cool as it is. Obviously, we can fine tune it. So now, when would the kick be finished? Well, like I said, if there's not any weird peaks, this one looks really good. And uh, check the volume with U Lean Loudness Meter. It's free. I'm not sure if that's correct, um, but you can export it. Um, one thing I will have to say, though, usually you cut off the stereo field um, in the bass section you can do that it's a little bit more difficult because paramedic eq doesn't allow you to um do a side cut so what we'll do is maximus it's a free plugin too um i mean stock plugin and you can do that go to the low uh make sure all the compression is off and then here you have separation and merged. Uh, put the low end on merged. And then you have a low cut on your stereo field. Let's check that in span if that is correct, which is also a free, free plugin. Yep, that is correct. Maybe we can boost a little bit. This looks good. Maybe shift it up a little bit. I would say 200. Is I'm already uh, annoyed with the punch. I think we need it. All right, guys, that is it for this tutorial. Um, I thought it was pretty fun to do with only stock plugins. It's not 
the amount of plugins you have, but it's the amount of knowledge you have. And if you want to experience more knowledge and a kick-ass community, check out the link in the description. Join the Uptempo and Hardcore Producer Program or become a member. And I'll see you in the next video.